Hello friends. Now we will start the chapter number three, which is junction transistor and field effect devices. So in this chapter, I will start the first point that is formation of transistor. Transistors are used to amplify or to switch the electronic signals. There are mainly two types of transistor. First is junction transistor. Junction transistor. And second one is point contact transistor. Point contact transistor. The junction transistors are used because of their small size and ruggedness. The junction transistors are again classified into two types. First one is NPN transistor. Junction transistors are classified into two types. Junction transistors. First one is NPN transistor, NPN transistor, and second one is PNP transistor, PNP transistor. Both NPN and PNP transistors have three terminals that is emitter, base and collector. The transistor can be constructed by using five basic techniques based upon these techniques. These are classified as based upon Fabrication technique, fabrication technique, these transistors are classified into five different types and the first one is grown junction transistor. First one is grown junction transistor. The second type is Alloy junction transistor. Alloy junction transistor. The third type is Diffusion junction transistor. Diffusion junction
ट्रांजिस्टर The fourth type is epitaxial junction transistor. Epitaxial junction transistor. and the fifth type is point contact transistor point contact transistor so depending upon the fabrication techniques these are the five types of transistor so we will see how the transistors are formed for this five different fabrication techniques so we will first consider the fabrication of grown junction transistor grown junction transistor so this type of transistor was developed in 1948 1948 by William Shockley. The Zerkowski technique is used to form the PN junction of grown junction transistor. So, in this time, uh, that this is the N region. This is the P region. And this is again N region. So, this forms the emitter of the transistor. This forms the base of transistor and this end region forms the collector of the transistor. The NPN grown junction transistor is made up of single crystal of semiconductor material that is either silicon or germanium is used uh, for fabrication of this grown junction transistor the impurity concentration of this semiconductor material is changed during the crystal growing operation by adding the n type or p type atoms as per requirement so this is all about the grown junction transistor then next one is alloy junction transistor Next one is alloy junction transistor. So we will see the diagram for this alloy junction transistor.
so in this alloy junction transistor the germanium bjt is developed in 1951 and and this is developed as an improvement over the grown junction transistor so for formation of this type of transistor first the n type semiconductor is taken and which acts as base and to this n type base on both side the indium contacts are given as shown in this figure 
the third type that is diffusion junction transistor diffusion junction transistor so this type of transistor is fabricated in 1954 so the diffusion junction transistor is a transistor which formed when n type silicon wafer which is called substrate is exposed to p type and n type gaseous impurities the diffusion is the process in which charged particles flow from higher concentration to lower concentration region the diffusion junction transistor use this diffusion technique to form the junction and in this technique the n type substrate is placed in a gaseous acceptor impurity and heated the acceptor impurity uh, that is the gaseous accept acceptor impurity diffuses into n type substrate and the n type substrate which forms the collector and due to diffusion of p type impurity it forms the p type layer that is base on it so we will see this formation of diffusion junction transistor the diagram so this is the n type base first so by the process of diffusion the p type impurity is inserted in this substrate and the substrate forms the collector region of the transistor and due to diffusion of this p type impurity then it forms the base of the transistor so after this diffusion process which introduces the p type impurity into the substrate it forms n type collector and on which p type base is formed so this p type layer which forms the base is created on n type layer that is collector the entire system is exposed to again the gaseous donor impurity and again heated the donor impurity is again diffuses into the p type layer to form the n type layer that is emitter on it and finally the diffusion junction transistor is formed so
So with diffusion technique, the transistor is formed, this upper end layer forms the emitter of the transistor, middle P layer forms the base of the transistor. and this substrate that is which we have taken initially which forms the collector of the transistor so as shown in this figure the diffusion junction transistor is formed so thus finally a thin layer of SiO2 is grown over the entire surface and photo etched so that the aluminium contacts can be made for the emitter and base layers. So in this way the diffusion junction transistor is formed. Then next type of transistor is epidaxial junction transistor. Fourth type is epidaxial junction transistor. The term epidaxy is the Greek word and it refers to ordered arrangement of some material. In this technique, a very thin layer of P-type semiconductor or N-type semiconductor is grown on heavily doped substrate of same material. If the substrate is N-type, a thin layer of N-type semiconductor is grown on the substrate. And the in a similar way, if the substrate is of P-type, a thin semiconductor layer of P-type is grown on that layer. So, in a single P-type or N-type semiconductor layer, it forms a collector on which the base and emitter regions may be diffused. So, for this epidaxial junction transistor, first the N type substrate, let us see the N type substrate is taken. So, this is substrate on which n type epitaxial collector n type epitaxial collector is formed And again on this that epitaxial layer, layer P-type region is grown and this P-type layer forms the base of the transistor and again upon the 
this p type base n type layer is grown and the bone assembly is oxidized which forms the sio2 and after oxidation the some regions get etched to draw the contacts from this and which forms the contacts for the emitter as well as base from the upper side so this n type region forms the emitter of the transistor this p type region forms the base of the transistor and as oxidation is grown at this lower side also again this wool side is this oxidation is removed and the contact is drawn from this substrate which forms the collector of the transistor so the most commonly used epitaxial techniques are grown with diffuse types diffused alloy types and alloy emitter epitaxial types base transistors so the next type of transistor is point contact transistor fifth is point contact transistor The point contact transistor was developed by Walter Bratton and uh, John Bardeen and William Shockley. John Bardeen. and william shockley in bell laboratories in 1947 in 1947 so these point contact transistors consist of block of germanium semiconductor with two very closed spaced gold contacts held against it by a spring a small strip of gold foil is attached over the point of the plastic triangle so for this point contact transistor we will see the diagram
so this <coughs> outer region is made up of plastic and here the spring is attached to this screw this is the metal base and on that metal base the single crystal germanium is placed this forms the collector lid and this forms the emitter lid emitter lid so this is the diagram for the point contact transistor which is developed in 1947 the germanium material has excess of electrons when the electrical signal is passed through the gold foil it injects the hole into the n type germanium crystal so this creates the thin p type semiconductor layer over the n type semiconductor layer a small current when applied to one of the two contacts it has an influence on the current flow between the other contacts and the base upon which the block of germanium is mounted a small change in the first contact current causes a greater change in the second contact current thus it acts as an amplifier the first contact is the emitter and the second contact is the collector the low current input terminal is the emitter while the high current output terminal are base and the collector so this is all about the point contact transistor so with this i will stop here thank you